This is three more engines for the meaning of life. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk has just shared an incredible photo from a special perspective, which shows all six powerful Raptor engines installed on the next generation Starship rocket. When Starship separates from Super Heavy, the spacecraft will be able to make an independent flight and can even land vertically on the surface of the planet, whether on Earth or another celestial body such as the Moon. While the precise serial number for this Starship prototype remains unconfirmed, notable design modifications are evident compared to its previous iteration. It's so much more neater under there than it was on earlier ships, notably lacking the presence of internal bracing among other improvements. The future of Starship is about to get even bigger as Elon Musk previously promised that the next Starships, or at least certain Starship variants, are being upgraded with 50% more Raptor engines and stretched propellant tanks. In that situation, at stage separation close to the vacuum, a stretched Starship with three sea level optimized Raptors or RCs and six vacuum optimized Raptors RVACs should produce at least 2,000 tons of thrust and possibly more than 2,250 tons depending on engine performance. At that upper level of thrust, Starship, an upper stage, would be almost as powerful as the first stage of Falcon Heavy, the most powerful powerful operational rocket in the world. If those estimates are accurate, upgrading Starship with nine Raptors and stretching its tanks is a no-brainer. It might slow development and make all nine engine ships cost a substantial fraction more, but a 50% improvement in payload performance would significantly improve the efficiency of Starship's more ambitious Moon and Mars launch profiles, which require numerous orbital refuelings. And that's about it for the flight hardware. The Starship's ground support system, on the other hand, is also also gradually being completed. The company has been making quick work out of installing large prefabricated components for the orbital launch mount transpirational cooled steel plates. At the time I made this report, two of the three manifolds had been installed in a permanent position. Aside from that, other manifolds used to pump water through the plate were also installed. This is a big Y pipe and this is another large pipe. Once these pipes are in place, the SpaceX launch pad will witness a massive wedding party. At this rate, they may be ready to leak check the system in a week. We are confident that this approach will effectively protect the OLM base from damage and erosion caused by the blast. However, there is still uncertainty surrounding its intended functionality. As we have observed in previous static fires and launches, a substantial amount of sand and dust is ejected into the air despite the concrete base. This is a natural occurrence in the area due to the wind stirring up sand dunes and depositing them everywhere, including on the newly installed deluge plate. The concern arises as these holes gradually become clogged with mud, which can potentially transform into ceramics on the plate. It remains to be seen whether the feed pipes to the plates originate from the bottom of the manifold resembling a straw in a drink, or if the manifold will constantly hold water. Only time will reveal the answers. Anyway, their exceptional performance is making every other contractor in the industry appear subpar. The amount of projects, vendors, and engineering management that goes into this is extraordinary. Importantly, this wasn't the only work that has taken place at the Starbase. In fact, the new Mega Bay is also being built at lightning speed. The second section of the fourth level of this building moved to the ring yard ready to stack. Star Factory is continuously expanding and is poised to eventually supplant the production tents at the site. Especially now that the section known as the Hot Stage Loadhead, which is believed to serve as a pathfinder for the revised interstage of Super Heavy, appears to have been relocated to Tent 1. This move suggests that we may soon have the opportunity to witness the assembled version of this hot staging system and finally see what it looks like. In another interesting piece of news about the space industry, the Spaceport Company, a pioneering player in the space industry composed of launch systems and maritime experts has just received a significant boost in funding from the Department of Defense to develop mobile sea-based launch platforms. The company secured a substantial investment of one and a half million dollars from the National Security Innovation Capital or NSIC program aimed at supporting early stage companies working on technologies with critical national security applications. The NSIC program was established to address the funding challenges 
based by promising American startups and securing capital for projects vital to national security. With a total allocation of $35 million, the program seeks to bridge the gap between innovative startups and trusted domestic sources of funding. The spaceport company's focus lies in the development of mobile sea-based launch platforms capable of hosting launches of small rockets from offshore locations. By leveraging these platforms, the company aims to alleviate congestion at traditional spaceports and provide a more flexible and agile solution for accessing space. The advantages offered by such platforms include enhanced launch flexibility, reduced turnaround times, and operational versatility touts the company. In May, the spaceport company successfully conducted a demonstration of its concept showcasing the viability and potential of sea-based launches at a reliable alternative to land-based infrastructure. The injection of $1.5 million from the NSIC program provides the spaceport company with financial support to further refine and advance its mobile sea-based launch platforms. This infusion of funding is expected to be used to expedite research and development efforts, facilitate additional testing, and accelerate the company's realization of its vision for the future of space launches according to the company. The Defense Department's investment in these types of technologies signals the strategic importance and intent of ensuring a resilient and robust national security infrastructure in the space domain. Launching from mobile sea-based platforms could enhance the United States' readiness and flexibility in responding to emerging threats, supporting satellite deployment for reconnaissance, communications, and other defense-related missions. Funding provided by the NSIC program can be seen as the government's recognition of the pivotal role played by startups and early-stage companies in driving innovation, pushing technology's boundaries, reinforcing national security capabilities, and fostering forward-thinking space pioneers. Last but not least for today's episode, the James Webb Space Telescope, or the JWST for short, has detected the most distant active supermassive black hole to date. The galaxy that hosts the ancient black hole, C CEERS-1019 formed fairly early in the universe's history at just 570 million years after the Big Bang. The active supermassive black hole at the center of Sears-1019 is unusual not only for its age and distance, but also in that it weighs in at just 9 million solar masses, meaning it's 9 million times heftier than our Sun. Typically, most supermassive black holes in the early universe weigh in at over 1 billion solar solar masses, making them brighter and easier to detect. The relatively small size of the black hole at the center of Sears 1019 is somewhat of a puzzle, according to a statement from the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, which manages JWST's science operations, it is still difficult to explain how it formed so soon after the universe began. Astronomers have long suspected that smaller black holes have formed in the early days of the universe, but these observations are the first to see them in such detail. Researchers have long known that there must be lower mass black holes in the early universe. Webb is the first observatory that can capture them so clearly, said Dale Kochevsky of Colby College in Waterville, Maine, who led one of the three new studies that used JWST to peer at the distant universe. Now we think that lower mass black holes might be all over the place, waiting to be discovered. Personally, I can't wait to see what JWST sees next. Well, folks, that wraps up up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing progress over at SpaceX, the research and development of sea-based launch platforms, and the amazing discoveries made by JWST. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.